Welcome to JSA TV and JSA Podcasts, the newsroom for telecom and data center professionals. I'm John Max Lima, and today I'm excited to be joined by two industry heavyweights to talk through how to empower the digital economy in one of the world's most populous countries. We've got Randy Brookman, CEO of global data center operator Edge Connects, and Jay Akuma Jana Karaj, CEO of Adani Connects. Uh, guys, thank you so much for joining us. How are you doing with everything that's going on in the world? <laughs> yeah, uh, thank you for having us. Uh, so far, so good, Joe. Uh, I hope we are. Um, I hope we're over the worst of it, and uh, fingers crossed. The world is headed to a better place here uh, in the very near future. It, it yes. feels like we're heading the right direction globally. That's for sure. Fingers crossed. And JJ, you're in Singapore. Things seem to be quite stable there as well. Yeah, things have been managed well uh, here, and uh, I would also say that uh, even in 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 India. Um, well, of course, the numbers are going up, and uh, but if you look at the way the vaccination drive is going on, and the availability of uh, and accessibility of vaccines hmm. is uh, really being done very well. Hmm. So I think that again, like what Randy said, is showing us that we are directionally going in the right way. Of course, we've got to go through this tide, which is just unprecedented. Uh, hmm. But I think we've got um, the, the ray of hope uh, yeah. because I think oh. the vaccine is working. We are finally getting some good news from all over the world, like Randy said as well, so especially in India. Um, and then speaking of good news and speaking of India, I mean, you've recently had big news as well. Um, you've entered into a, a joint venture, probably the largest data center development that we've heard of um, in India to date. Talk us through the joint venture. The joint venture. How did this? How was the, uh, the moment created for you to come together? Uh, where did the idea come from? Like, what was the first time that you met? Yeah. Wow. Well, I'll take the first stab. JJ, you can fill in some of the blanks. Uh, well, the uh, need, needless to say, it didn't happen overnight. Uh, it wasn't like two, two random people meeting in a bar and uh, uh, great things came out of it. Uh, Only the last 12 months, at least. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. Uh, we had, uh, at Edge Connects, we, we listened to our customers and it was very clear uh, that our customers have big, big plans and ambitions uh, in India. There were clearly some regulatory changes on the horizon in India. And, and, and frankly, the government there is just kind of doing a lot of the right things to build the nation and digitize, you know, digitize the, the country. Uh, it was clear we needed to go there. It was, was also clear uh, as, as we went over there and met with various real estate firms and looked in various challenges with getting power to sites and so on that um, it, was a, it was a market that we probably would not do well in simply organically, that, that what was going to be uh, the, right, the right partner. Uh, and uh, we met with, a, you know, met with a lot of people, kissed a lot of frogs, as they say, uh, and uh, had started discussions with uh, Adani. Oh, wow. It's got to be almost two years ago now, uh, if not, not a little bit more. Uh, and uh, uh, advanced those discussions. Uh, we were introduced through an engineering firm that both companies knew. Uh, the CTO of, of Adani Enterprises introduced, of Adani Group, uh, actually uh, introduced us. Uh, we advanced it. Didn't happen at that time. Uh, I think Adani explored some other options. Um, good news is um, it came back. In the meantime, we kind of continued to look at, at opportunities. And, you know, to us, it was, it was the, uh, it was an, obvious choice of a great partner. You know, when I, when I look at Adani, uh, they are clearly the leaders uh, in, in infrastructure, you, you know, in physical infrastructure, probably the leader. Um, they are the largest green power producer uh, in, the, in the country, far and away. They are uh, the largest solar farm producer in, in one, of the, one of the, if not the, in the world uh, with uh, uh, they, they clearly believe in ESG principles, uh, own ports and harbors and airports. And, you know, uh, when you think of it, Donnie, it's, it's just it's a, a, a company dedicated to bettering the lives and building the nation, you know, bettering the lives of, of the citizens of India and, and quite mm -hmm. frankly, uh, being a nation builder. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, little old Edge Connects with our meaningful uh, footprint <laughs> and, and reasonable success in really hyper-local to hyper-scale and powering the cloud and content and uh, bringing that together with uh, the enterprises that need it and the, and the networks that drive it. 
Um, I think we filled in some of the pieces for the for the folks at Donnie. I'll let them speak to themselves. But you know, at the end of the day, we can talk about how it's it really is a great partnership and makes a lot of logical and financial mm -hmm. sense. But I actually think what made it work was both companies still have that entrepreneurial spirit at their core, right? Mm -hmm. Just the you know, let's talk less and do more, um, mm -hmm. and you know, not afraid to succeed and uh, you know, look, look at obstacles as opportunities and just a can do mentality. And so culturally, uh, believe it or not, we, mm -hmm. we signed an LOI quickly, right? In a week or two, it was negotiated. And frankly, the 80, 90% of the deal was hashed out in less than 30 days. So it actually came together quickly, but it had been a long courtship. And JJ, that's, that's the history I remember. <laughs> yeah. Feel free to rewrite it differently. If you like. <laughs> No, I think Randy, you touched on all the uh, important aspects, uh, and like you said, uh, these relationships um, are very complementary. I think I would uh, start from there. Um, the entrepreneurial spirit, the passion uh, to deliver, and also the vision uh, of the marketplace and uh, the way we want to charter the course. Um, we do not want to sort of walk the path that many people have gone through, right? We want to set our own course as well. And I think all those aspects are very common between the two partners. And to be and to lead this management team to work on this joint venture is, again, I would say we are having a lot of tailwinds than headwinds because both the partners are so sort of aligned and complementary in their skill sets, technology from Edge Connects, uh, the reach of the customers uh, from Edge Connects, strategic relationships. Um, for Adani with certain customers, land banking with Adani Enterprise, green energy from Adani Green. Mm. So, and then the engineering expertise that is available within <clears throat> Edge Connects being complementary to what we have execution skill set uh, from Adani because ultimately that's very, very key. And India as a marketplace, like we all know, the digitization is the name of the game. COVID has actually accelerated that. And there have been other triggers as well. Of course, a policy trigger uh, wherever it happens, it will trigger. But I think the demand triggers have been multiple, uh, not just the policy aspect alone. And we'll talk about that as we go on. So I think it's an exciting joint venture and um, true to the spirit of uh, what it has been signed. It's a 100-100 joint venture uh, of two like-minded entrepreneurs. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot there to dissect, um, but I really like the point of even the cultural fit, because uh, we've seen some uh, foreign companies coming in into Asia, let's not even say in just Asia, uh, and things didn't work out. So I think that's a very important aspect that around the Euro up, um, that I think a lot of companies actually forget when they get into these sort of joint ventures. Um, and I mean, you can't go bigger than Adani. I mean, Adani is the biggest player in India, so <laughs> when it comes to infrastructure. Uh, but I mean, the data center market in India is very, very exciting. I mean, the market is growing. You can't even call it a boom. I mean, it's an explosion. It's like an atomic explosion. Um, it's going at a compound annual growth rate of about 23%, uh, actually the same as China, which is much higher than the global average of about 7%. Um, and JJ, I know you've already touched on some points uh, that are driving the demand and they will be driving even more demand in the future. But what do you guys think are the reasons behind all this growth um, and what are the future trends that you see will deliver on f f further growth that will also contribute to the success of your partnership? Yeah. See, I think uh, the first thing to look at is uh, the size of the population that India has, right? 1.2 billion people and growing. And that's not having any controls like what China had uh, in terms of uh, mm. one-child policy, etc., which is which is again the fundamental base there. But the more important thing to see is also the demographics. If you look at, we have 800 million people in India, less than the age of 35. Okay. So you've got this young population who are willing to leapfrog on technology. A person who did not have a bank account two years back, post demonetization is today receiving and paying everything on Google Pay. Okay. And, and this is not a one-off sort of a thing. And if you look at the way the fintech apps business has sort of exploded, those numbers are not showing 23%. Those numbers are showing 600% um, growth, uh, right, in the last two years. And that, that is because there is this leapfrogging of this uh, platform. Uh, people who didn't have banking and no formal banking have gone into Google Pay, okay, or the likes of it, Paytms and things like that, right? Uh, and the other day I was walking through uh, one of the restaurants, uh, people are selecting the menu there and then 
just scanning the barcode and then uh, the QR code and making the payment on their mobile phone, right? Which even me, who has not lived in India for just a very short period of time, is seeing it as uh, as a technology shift mm. that has happened not in urban India, uh, but in the second tier, third tier, and in the rural India. So I think that's where the major difference is coming. It's mm. not just the urban demand. It's not just uh, what do you call the high tech industries. Um, uh, that are driving the demand. It's it's the entire population that's driving the demand. The rate of growth of data consumption in the rural India is actually higher than the rate of growth in urban India, uh, which is one of those. I think this is the only commodity in India which is growing the other way, right? So it's a very inclusive growth. So it's not a top-down uh, growth. It's a very inclusive growth. It's caught uh, fire, so it's like wildfire. It's going to grow, grow. But I think the more important thing. Um, is how do we provide the infrastructure to keep this growth, what do you call, in the sensible quality and sustainability aspect? I think I think that's that's where, uh, as Adani connects, we genuinely believe that uh, we'll be able to mature that market, uh, and we'll be able to give the direction to that market, and therefore that growth is not going to be just a spurt and it's going to just sort of then uh, stay flat, but then there's going to be a year-on-year opportunity for us to grow our customers. In a very sustainable way, hmm. so that's that's how I would see uh, Indian market and approach the Indian market. Hmm. No, which makes sense as well. And, and Randy, well, wow, what is there to add? Uh, <laughs> uh, I, look, I I think uh, uh, the drivers. I think uh, JJ has hit on hit on real well, um, and and I think there's a commitment um, to the industries there from the government there. To, to make sure this digitalization, this acceleration of the digitalization occurs. Uh, I guess what I, uh, you know, I have the, the lens and the perspective of, of what our customers are telling us. And, um, you know, there's uh, uh, some coaching I got early on from a uh, real industry luminary, Christian Bellotti, uh, is at Microsoft. And he said to me, uh, we're, we're having a, a dinner conversation. He looks up and he says to me, ah, you're 10 times you're, you're thinking 10 times too small. Um, so, um, and he says, no matter how big you think, we think it's going to be, no matter how much network capacity is going to be needed, uh, how much storage, how much compute, et cetera, uh, the rate at which the world needs it is consuming it, the enterprises are utilizing it, is, you know, no, no estimate has been, no estimate, nobody has overestimated it yet, <laughs> right? Um, yeah. And, I'm with JJ. Um, you know, I think COVID has accelerated some of this um, behavior for the better, right? There's a lot of bad with COVID, but um, there's been some some positives in it, and and it's um, democratized certain things, which I think is is outstanding. Yeah, I think the other interesting aspect as well is that we are now hearing just about the big urban centers, Mumbai, New Delhi, um, Bangalore. We are starting to hear a lot about different cities that we've never even heard before. Um, until digital adoption really kicked in. So that's that's very interesting. Uh, but we also often hear that it's challenging to build data center infrastructure um, in India. Um, um, a lot of people have different views on that, So, but it is challenging for some companies to do it, uh, even more so if you're a foreign company. But with the new data regulations coming into force, um, so like we had GDPR in Europe, like the, uh, the US is doing, with new data regulations coming into force, India needs data centers more than ever. Um, and as we mentioned, the explosion in digital us- usage um, it's just going to put they even more up. Um, how is your joint venture addressing those things? So, Randy, shall I go first? Yeah, go ahead, JJ. Okay. <laughs> You're living so, it day in and day out. <laughs> very well behaved panelist. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so I think uh, the way we approach it, I see it, like I said earlier, execution is the key challenge um, when it comes to any greenfield um, and the organic uh, growth options, right? So as Adani, the main thing that we have focused is on project execution and delivery. That has been our key focus area as we have built this organization itself. So whether it has been the ports we started building, whether it has been the uh, power infrastructure that we have started building, the renewables business that we have started building. So I'll just give you an example so that it it fits into this uh, dialogue and I'll then take it to specific two data centers. The entire renewable space was exactly like what we were, what we are today, uh, talking about the first data center, building the first data center five years back. 
2016, we literally had nothing in the ground working on renewables. Okay, we started this business flat out on the ground. In five years, and a lot of players came in at that time. Just like how today the data center market is crowded, a lot of PE funds, a lot of money coming into India, saying that we want to build renewable business into India. So a lot of promises being made uh, in the marketplace. Right, we started quietly as an uh, as a company, and we started doing the job. Five years hence, okay, when we look back today, what has the company achieved as a group, as a team? Hmm. It has achieved nearly five gigawatt operational. Five gigawatt coming into operations this year. Hmm. Overall, close to fifteen gigawatt PPA signed. Okay, a market cap of a company close to thirty billion US dollars. Listed entity. Separately listed, the only listed renewables company in India, world's largest solar developer. Okay, vision of 25 gigawatt by 2025. Okay, 20 percent stake in the renewables company as equity being taken by Total, which is an energy giant uh, from France. So it again depicts that it is not alone the promise, but it is the quality of planning, execution, delivery, governance. And scalability, which is which is giving this opportunity, and India as a marketplace gives this scale. Okay, the key is to get execution right. So coming back to your question, I think we are absolutely in the same space. Coming to data center, we've got a we've got the vision, we've got the two architects, uh, Edge Connect and uh, Adani, with the right skill sets, and uh, we have to now put our skill sets into play. Which is uh, whether it is in land acquisition, project planning, designing, getting the contracts done, execution, and that's our core competence. The whole team uh, has been into that space uh, for for decades, and uh, therefore we we live and breathe project execution um, excellence uh, day in and day out for India. And Indian dynamics are quite different, right? Whether it comes to contractor selection, whether it comes to land execution. um we do have advantages uh, as well there because adani enterprise does have land banks uh, proactively um, being done uh, ahead of what adani connects wants yeah, so that's again a positive for us right um to do green energy uh, we do have options whether we get into the market from uh, players or we get it from uh, captive uh, energy generation there are options so i think uh, to your question the whole focus for us is how do we sort of use our skill sets in execution and more closely in terms of monitoring uh, the way we execute the projects the way we plan and execute the projects but also de-risking some of the key elements of land uh, up front mm-hmm. okay and therefore uh, as a team uh, what we are looking for is two years ahead we are not looking for uh, a year ahead or Uh, like adani has already bought i'm sure you would have seen in the news it's already in the public domain uh, they have bought a data center park land in vizag okay uh, so vizag i'm sure nobody would have heard uh, how it's going to get connected but they are already planning how to get it connected right so they are planning ahead of the game a second tier city or a third tier city actually vizag not even a second tier city so so i think those paves a road map and gives that uh, what do you call headway for us as adani connects to draw our customers um, to locations where we can give them scale like mm-hmm. we can the plan there is to put 1 gigawatt of uh, solar energy mm-hmm. okay and power all the data centers that will be built there so mm-hmm. when you are having huge land of around 230 acres build a gigawatt of renewable energy and then you tell people okay now we are going to connect it through a submarine cable and then it's going to have data centers okay mm-hmm. so that's the suite okay mm-hmm. but again we are, we are seeing it to sort of give some path breaking solutions hmm. and that's that's the benefit of having stronger parents uh, on both sides so so that's uh, that's an execution uh, advantage uh, that we bring on the table as well yeah i mean, one one thing that was coming to my head as you were talking it's you walk the walk uh, which goes back to the point that randy made um in the first answer as well um randy would you like to add anything to that Yeah, look, I I I think JJ hit on it, but you know, let, look at the end of the day, we've got bordering on 45 to 50 data centers in 35 markets from hyper local to hyper scale. I mean, we have we created the concept to bring the data center to where the customers need it. Uh that's kind of we invented there. Um and 
we know how to do that. And we've been able to work hand in hand uh, with uh, as part of Adani Connects to make sure that that skill set transfers. Both companies are absolutely unwaveringly focused on safety and how this is going to happen, right? We, 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 we are and will continue to be the gold standard for how to do that each and every time. Hmm. And so you, you just step back and think about it. Are there local nuances? Yes, there are uh, on how to execute. Are there particular challenges around land and power? For sure. Um, but that's why Adani, you know, as JJ said, that's, that's, those are hurdles that Adani knocks down. Renewable power, the biggest and the best at this, right? We'll go build power where we need to build it uh, from a, a renewable power sense. Clearly, they know how to build infrastructure, right? As you said, nobody's done it bigger. Um, and, and, and in doing that, that means you understand the local challenges and the local mm. nuances. And, you know, what works in one market may or may not be the key to the other market, right? It's not all things are created equal, certainly in any country in Asia, much less. Uh, any particular region uh, or any particular city. But, you know, at the end of the day, we stay aligned on our, our mutual goals, right? We, we want to we wanna deliver capacity where our customer needs it, when they need it, and kind of at what size and scale uh, they need it. And we're going to do that on time, every time, safely and sustainably. That's, mm. that's it. And so, you know, I think the partnership has complementary skills to do that and a proven track record. And both companies have proven track records. So um, it's nice to speak from experience, right? Here's what we've done. Not, you know, trust us, we can do this, right? Mm -hmm. uh, this, is, uh, this has been proven. Yeah, I, I love the point about adaptability as well, because that's, again, it's something that a lot of people sometimes forget when they go into other markets. So it's just a really good point, again, um, when it comes to adaptability and cultural knowledge. Um, of the area you're stepping into. But uh, I mean, you both mentioned energy. We know that Adani is massive when it comes to energy, um, not even just on, just in India, but also on a global scale. Um, can we talk a little bit more about the power that's going to go into this data center? So the renewable energy that's going to go into the data center, how much have you got already available for it? Um, what's going to be the first big deployment when it comes to gigawatts or mega, megawatts or gigawatts? Um, talk just a little bit through the power part of the, the JV. It, it, JJ, go ahead, and I think it even goes beyond just just power in some cases, the sustainability. Mm. Go ahead. Yeah, sure. So, see, as we have read, uh, we have uh, discussed this, uh, Adani's portfolio on energy is quite extensive, right? Whether it is uh, in the renewable space, whether it is in the transmission distribution space, mm. and as we all know, the energy market is quite regulated in India. So there is a very uh, what do you call strict regulated structure uh, within which this whole regime needs to operate. It also opens opportunities. Okay, it opens opens opportunities in two ways. One is the data center is a very stable load. Okay, mm. except during the ramp up of the construction phase or the commissioning phase, it's a very stable load. So it is something that any power producer would would love to connect this load to. Right? It's it's like sitting there and then it's consuming data it means energy every time. So it's a it's a nice load to have in your grid. So it 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 gives advantages. But the challenge always has been uh, one is reliability, okay, number one, uh, when, when it comes uh, to certain locations. And number two is in terms of getting the amount of green energy that you need into that uh, grid. And this is where the regulation and localization uh, is very important in India. A lot of people think that, okay, uh, Southeast Asia is all same. Some people think that India is all same. Uh, India is like Europe, okay, we've got 30 states, we've got like 30 countries. Okay, so there are 30 different set of regulations for energy and uh, there are interconnection rules between states. So you can wield power between states, but there are you have to play differently in different markets. Hmm. So I think the way we have structured is that when we are, say, for example, doing our Chennai data center. So there is a certain option for us. One is to contract with Adani Green and therefore get green electrons from Adani Green and then blend it with the energy that we will get from the grid and therefore give our customers an option to choose from, uh, whether they want 30%, 50%, or even more, right? So, so there are options for that. And then the as we ramp up uh, the volumes, then we have a very clear option to do a captive generation. Uh, so if they're going to have a 10 megawatt load, it makes it very simple. Our first data center is 17 megawatt. So whenever we're going to get 10 megawatt, whether it is a first year or second year, 
we can have our own captive generation and then we are feeding green electrons into the grid anywhere in tamil nadu okay uh, whether the electron is coming from wind or from solar or wind and solar as a hybrid model and then we are drawing those electrons uh, through the substation where we are connected so there are mechanisms which allow us to do this hmm. the advantage for us is that like i said again the core competence and the expertise hmm. and the infrastructure hmm. is all sitting within the group okay to hmm. tap into so it is not like we need to go to a third party and then learn these things because these are quite complex and then pay for every transaction whereas this whole thing is sitting inside so if we have to execute a uh, captive generation um, so then there is a certain shareholding that uh, the joint venture will have and then we have to consume 50% of the energy that that generator generates so assume that we put a 50 megawatt plant uh, we have to consume 50% of the energy that that location is going to generate and we must have minimum 26% stake in it and then not only we are getting the electrons but we are also getting a subsidized uh, regulatory price okay so there is a certain regulatory discount that kicks in so all these options are available for adani connects and and that's exactly where when we are giving a full suite uh, of uh, solution to the customer it makes a very big difference because we are not going to the customer just selling space we are also selling energy solution which is again a sustainable energy solution and to certain bigger customers when when we are going for bigger locations the advantage is we can also give them certificates to offset some of their carbon uh, what do you call footprints that they want to offset in countries like singapore and asia pacific okay because they are having the certain um, requirements there they can buy energy certificates from us and then offset so so they are getting a not alone a sustainable solution for their locations in india they are also able to buy some credits uh, because the markets available to sell those credits to them and then they can use those credits uh, to offset in their uh, other uh, energy uh, renewable energy deficient markets where be it singapore be it uh, japan or be it korea so so the customers are looking at that full suite of what do you call benefit in terms of uh, the uh, sustainability or energy that that comes to come to us so that is a uh, entire plan of course like i said uh, these things uh, need to be planned for each location for each data center um very specifically and uh, should be custom built within that regulatory framework of that state hmm. okay that, that's a good point to actually i guess a lot of us on this side of the world um being based in in europe that we kind of lack sometimes the idea they also to build throughout india you deal with these almost different countries like the eu does uh, with its member states so that's very good um and randy Wow. Um, uh, I think there was a lot taken. I know. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I'm going to be able to add anything to how <laughs> green power is uh, uh, is produced, managed, and offered, and and up through captive power arrangements. Uh, when it comes, when you're talking with uh, people from Adani and the head of Adani <laughs> Connects, but I I guess what I can say is I'm going to tie it back to that culture fit. And you know, it's interesting if you if you listen to JJ's words and the and the focus and the passion and the vision. of what we can do for uh, as as Adani connects you, you think about what we can do for the people in our and the customers in our planet that really comes back to our culture norms right at edge connects we say mm-hmm. real, it's real simple mm-hmm. take care of your customers take care of your people and take care of the planet frankly the rest will take care of itself right we don't put the shareholder at the front of that list we don't put it your you know Yeah, you know, what's my bonus going to be? None of that stuff falls at the top of the list, right? Take care of your customer, take care of your people and take care of the planet. And if you listen to what how JJ answered that question, I think those norms just came all the way through it. So, it's it just kind of drives home that culture fit we talked about from the beginning. Yeah. It's creating a positive cycle of positivity almost. <laughs> <laughs> um and then but uh, also I mean of course we talked about power energy that's huge is very important climate change sustainability uh, but beyond that beyond green energy how is the joint venture how is the two companies how are the two two companies going to help um the local community so what's your corporate social responsibility um with the place where you're going to be building and you're going to be digging you're going to be building buildings um there'll be a lot of things happening and then we know data centers especially data centers now became much more involved with local schools local communities um what what have you planned around that yeah 
so i think uh, let me sort of give you a, an overall aspect mm-hmm. and with some specific examples as well <clears throat> See the first and the foremost thing is local employment opportunities. Okay, so recruitment from local schools and local colleges, and then training them in a global development program. So we are working on a global development program where we are going to rotate talent, recruit them locally, train them globally, and then be able to come back and deliver a global world class product in the local sense. Right. So then there there is a lot of ownership. and and on that and and the reason i'm sort of speaking with this level of comfort and confidence is because i'm a product of that okay i was recruited with, from a very small town if i tell you the name of the town where i come from i'm sure you won't see it in the map of india mm. okay and and then i was taken to australia and the us trained brought back to india to build plants build infrastructure and then and then grow into leadership roles so so how do we create this talent and how do we create this ownership right and this acceptance within the community so that we are not just building an island of excellence where people see this data center and say wow this is a great building right that's just brick and mortar but how do we build that flesh and blood around it right that mm-hmm. the whole ecosystem is saying wow they created this leader from my son you know my son used to work in this company and today he runs a different company and he runs a different business how do we create that entire ecosystem of support because that ecosystem of support is going to help you grow right not just the data center business but grow as a as a good corporate citizen around that whole ecosystem so that framework is very much there and and that's right in the center of uh, our uh, recruitment policy our focus as a leadership team and commitment uh, more than focus it's a commitment from the leadership team that this is something that we passionately want to uh, grow talent hmm. the next important thing is see the second to energy in india the most scarce product i would say even scarcer than energy is water okay so anything we do to preserve water reduce the consumption of water is a very very important thing recycling water so we are looking at projects like in our chennai data center we are looking at a project where we can connect waste water uh, which is coming as effluent from uh, the nearby housing colonies okay and then treat those waters and use those waters and actually even supply water so we are net positive on water and not net negative on water uh, mm. to the community as well around Yes. so these are real projects that we are working on and these are not stuff that we are wanting to do because these are feel good factors no these are factors like randy said takes mm-hmm. care of the planet takes care of the people links the community with the larger good for the purpose of uh, mm-hmm. social responsibility and then ties into the values of the uh, what do you call the uh, corporate as well so its commitment its trust building trust so it's 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 all that into that whole fabric and then again to be very truthful to the whole thing it's not like okay we want to do it because yeah you know it's written in the policy so and this is what i keep telling people that you know for for us our commitment to climate change is not a document it's mm-hmm. our business model okay so so if i don't build green energy and supply green energy to my company if i don't save water it's again built into the business model so so the the whole management team is incentivized to deliver that business model in the right aspect uh, to again uh, what do you call to be uh, recognized as good corporate citizen so that's that's the entire way we are building the fabric of this company right from day mm-hmm. one because mm-hmm. i like uh, you you will know we are we are a startup adani connects is a startup but but we want to have this cultural fabric right in the core of it so that when it grows and when it becomes 100 200 megawatt and even bigger tomorrow this this core is actually going to be bigger and it's actually going to show up and not that we need to put ppts to tell people what we do hmm nice as you mean bringing their flesh and blood out uh which is going to help thousands of people um you know across the cities that you're going to go to um and randy yeah look i think the, with jj hit on on <clears throat> some of what we're doing um in, inside adani connects right he he mentioned we're, we're they're recruiting the right talent we're part of building up that global education platform that the JJ talked about so we'll be able to take some of these uh hopefully a fair number of the 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 folks that they're recruiting and growing and training and we're going to be bringing them up to our european headquarters and our kind of engineering center in the united states and going to be able to give them that global training and experience so that when they come back they they've had that those opportunities to grow um this is uh this is a key part of it right um actually think as edge connects we're going to 
take advantage of the fact we've, we've put this infrastructure in place to do so. And obviously we're working with the, the growing, rapidly growing Adani Connects team uh, in the first wave through, but we're going to be expanding even our operations to be able to uh, reach out in, in, into the community and hire and train and, and create that global uh, global learning experience and mm. local execution. So mm. yeah, this is, um, this isn't something we do because, you know, yeah, you want the PR or anything you do this because it's just fundamental to the business model. It's fundamental to the success. Right. Um, yeah. uh, and, and by the way, and it makes sense. <laughs> it does make <laughs> sense. Um, no, but it also goes back to that cycle of positivity and positivity generates positivity and good results um, without having to push for it. And like JJ, you said as well, this is not a box ticking exercise um, has some business see it. So I think you made the good points, but talking about the future success, I mean, you've got 10 years to go with this first JV. There's a lot of work to be done. We've seen that throughout our conversation now, but are you guys dreaming already what JV 2.0 is going to look like in 20, 20, in 2031, 32? Um, what were you thinking? Go ahead, JJ. As if, as if, as if us talking about the five and ten-year plans aren't enough. <laughs> it's, it's it's a bit of a futurology question, but <laughs> let's try. <laughs> no, I think uh, like we've all said, we've got a very ambitious first five-year goal. The second five-year goal to grow to one gigawatt is surely not going to be just organic. There is obviously going to be some inorganic consolidation. We all know that uh, the market will consolidate like every other business has happened. This market will consolidate. So we'll, we will have opportunities to consolidate there and add value to customers, even in those uh, acquisitions that uh, we might look at at that point of time. But I would like to just reflect on two things. You see, the, the whole success is not going to be just because of a few people. The, the whole thing is going to be how the team is going to feel on that particular time, whether it is five years, six years, 10 years. Milestones can be in, in multiple, uh, what do you call, slots. But I think at every given point of time, the team is going to feel that they've been part of a story which has built an infrastructure deficit, data center market into a very different place mm. altogether in five, seven, ten years from now. And given the industry a very different shape and form, okay, and given the customers a sustainable solution which they actually were not even thinking of, okay? So we have defined the marketplace, but it is not to just take success as an individual or as anything, but it's a very collective thing. So nobody can just stand up and say, you know, I did this, but it's like the whole team did it. We have created a set of leaders who can sort of run companies tomorrow, be it Adani Connects or uh, even come out and run other companies that Edge Connects wants to run or Adani wants to run. So so I think that, le that satisfaction of creating that set of leadership, set of standards and benchmarks, which tomorrow people will want to sort of live up to. I think, I think those are the kind of, uh, what do you call, aspects that we would like to keep our focus on and which absolutely involves, whether it is the governance, whether it is the safety, um, uh, health and environmental aspects uh, around the mm -hmm. whole ecosystem. So I think our focus is more going to be an, on how do we get that collective mindset uh, to remain focused. And of course, there will be challenges down the road. And we all know that any greenfield project, and if you want to do 200, 500 megawatt, it's not going to be easy. And there are going to be what you call challenges. But how do we remain as a team, work as a team, support, and then not look at each other's faults, but sort of supplement each other's uh, failures to learn from that and also to learn from success. And uh, so that's, that's going to be our, uh, I would say, uh, what do you call, uh, aim to be uh, looking at and then when we look back I'm sure there'll be a lot of satisfaction hmm. for a lot of us around that so there's some exciting 10 years ahead Randy what's your dream <laughs> uh, wow uh, my dream is that we've grown a set of uh, future leaders um, where in year 11 you're having this discussion not with Randy and JJ and a hmm. few of the other folks uh, that are on here but maybe nobody on this phone or on this message today, or on this recording today, um, are the people that are talking about the next 10 years, if you will. They're talking about the next generation of cooling, of power, of integrated solutions. My guess is uh, <laughs> we'll have underestimated how much was needed in the first 10 years. Uh, 
I fundamentally believe that. I've already underestimated what we needed in year one, for goodness sake. That's what I was going to say. That's what I think one of the to realize. <laughs> um, I think we'll probably look back on it and underestimated what we needed in the first 10 years. Um, probably we'll be wiser to know what's going to be required in the next 10. And that's types of computing and storage and applications that some of us just aren't. I know I'm not clever enough to understand or, or think of today. But I think what success looks like for us is um, that, that there's likely a different set of people sitting in these chairs talking about a Donny Connects, <laughs> right? Somewhere, you know, sitting back there is an even more bald JJ and Randy. <laughs> so, um, uh, I can't get that day. <laughs> making a phone call, uh, you know, for offering sage advice. But, but I think that's when we've succeeded, right? Um, hmm. And, and they're there and, and taking the company and the industry and frankly, hopefully India to whole new places. Um, mm -hmm. And we do the work, we do the, we do the groundwork and the heavy lifting these, these first 10 years. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, it'll, it'll grow even more in the second 10. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and Brandon, staying with you and I wouldn't be truth to myself if I didn't close this off with an expansion question. Um, I mean, you mentioned before you're present in 35 metros. You've got this massive expansion projects going on in India now uh, for 10 years, 2030. Where next? Where do you want to go next? What new markets are you looking at? Are you having discussions? Are you planning to get into, I mean, especially across Asia and even Africa, because I think that's probably the last continent that you're not in. Um, correct me if I'm well, wrong. I, 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 count, I count India. <laughs> so is <Yeah>. Asia. <laughs> um, the... Uh, uh, so, um, well, look, in this day and age, I'd like to go anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, I, uh, you know, I barely get out of the house. Uh, but no, oh, yeah, well. on a serious <laughs> note, the, uh, look, we, we uh, consummated the EQT transaction uh, late last year uh, in, in November of, of last year uh, with the intention and mindset and deliberate uh, focus and desire to uh, to grow and expand, right? We we uh, part of the deal was we were going to be EQ EQT's data center platform globally, um, and they've honored that every step of the way. They were going to uh, put fuel on the fire, right? If you will, invest for growth, um, both organically and inorganically. Um, it requires an EQT to be able to do a partnership of the size and magnitude mm -hmm. that we've talked about here. Uh, we're going to continue to grow. I think this week or within the last week, I think we've announced uh, an expansion into Barcelona. So you saw us enter Spain. We will go further into Asia. We have a firm mandate to do so. Um, mm. There's no doubt about it, right? Uh, India was number one priority for us, um, but there are other uh, opportunities and frankly, customers asking us to provide the types of solutions we've been talking about here um, mm. in, in some other markets. Uh, and, and we'll do that. Uh, we'll, we'll support them. We continue to see a lot of growth in South America. We continue to see uh, a tremendous amount of growth in, in Europe, both in the, the traditional big markets, but also in, in new markets that are opening, right? We, mm. we see big opportunities in countries like, like Poland, um, uh, like Belgium, et cetera, where uh, there's just, you know, this, this insatiable uh, consumption of compute and storage and the growth of data and the intelligence that can be garnered and utilized from that data, it's, it's, it's happening everywhere. And I think enterprises are becoming better, more nimble, more efficient as they migrate to these cloud platforms. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, as you said, success breeds success. Um, as they move to their workloads to these platforms, I think they see success. They see better speed to market. They see more control of their compute costs and you know, it's just accelerating the whole thing. So you're gonna see us growing on a number of fronts, both organically and inorganically. Um, mm. That's a little new for us on the inorganic inorganic side. Um, Here is now. <laughs> but we got a heavy, no, we got, but we also have a, uh, a focused eye on certain, um, frankly, customer driven demands to help support their needs uh, in Asia. Uh, and Europe, right? Uh, in particular, those two areas. Uh, and, you know, South America has boomed for us. I think we're 
on our third and now contemplating our fourth data center in South America. So hmm. no, no lack of growth there too. Okay. Well, sounds, sounds good. I can't wait to see where, what's next, what's the next yeah. big expansion, the next new country that you're going to go into. Country, <laughs> Stay tuned. <laughs> I definitely will. Uh, well, Randy and JJ, thank you so much for talking um, about the JV and uh, the Indian markets. Uh, I really like the, the cultural aspect in the adaptability uh, and bringing in people into the business, not just being about the business. Um, so I think there was a very good chat. Um, and thank you to our viewers as well for tuning in to JSA TV and JSA Broadcasts. And don't forget to check our social channels for more content. Until next time, happy networking. Thank you. Thank you all.